Hey, what's good fam? So the SP404 Mark II firmware update version 2 is here, and in this video I'm going to show you some of the smaller additions and improvements to the functionality that have actually had the biggest impact on my workflow. I say smaller because there's two real big ones. The first is they've added a TR style step sequencer, so you can dial in a pattern like this. And the second one is now you can record chromatic pitch in the pattern sequencer. Both of these are huge, but here's a few you might not know about. First on my list that stood out to me is called Snap to Zero Cross, which helps get cleaner positioning for start, end, and chop markers. So for example, I've got this road sample that I want to chop. You can hear that clicking sound at the start of the chop. This is what happens when you start playing digital audio when the sound wave is not on the zero line. So what you can do now is hit resample and it shifts the marker to the nearest position where it chops the sample clean. I used to spend a lot of time searching for that sweet spot so this is great. Now to quickly assign these chops to pads and add them to a mute group, which brings me to what's next on my list. The previous firmware update introduced being able to change the pitch and volume of all the samples in a mute group at the same time by holding down copy. That list has now been expanded to include being able to change the BPM of all the chops and toggle on and off BPM sync, gate, loop, and reverse. But my favorite is that you can now go into envelope and do the same, which is a big time saver for me. Next up, SP303 style reverse. So 404 style reverse means that when you're playing a sample and hit the reverse button, it goes to the end point and starts playing backwards from there. Go into system settings and change reverse type to 303. And now when you hit reverse, it starts playing backwards from that point. Sometimes when you have a sample that isn't quite long enough for your pattern, you can do this to stretch it out in an interesting way. I like to mess around with it like that and then go into skip back to save it to a pad. Next I'm going to record these chops into my pattern to show you another thing I really like. When recording a pattern in the previous firmware, you'd hit exit when done and the beat would stop playing. Now when you hit exit, it stops recording but the beat keeps on playing. Also, while it's still playing, you can now copy that pattern to another pad. Being able to jump in and out of record mode and make copies without breaking the flow are really big ones for me. Let me demonstrate what that looks like. Righto, so now that I've got my basic loop, let's talk about dry routing. You can see by the pad colors, I've got the road sample assigned to bus one, the drums to bus two, and my bass is not assigned to any bus channel. Previously, this would mean that when I turn on the bus three and four effects, the orange and the green stuff would be affected, but the white pads would bypass those effects. Now, if you scroll across to the other tab and change dry routing to bus three, the white pads will now be affected by the bus three and four stuff. One of the new effects that I'm really getting into when jamming on a beat is backspin. I kinda approach it the same sort of way I would the stopper effect. Here's what it sounds like.
Okay, last but not least, I'm really stoked that we can now create patterns in other time signatures, ranging from 1-4 to 7-4. So, here's a 5-4 drum beat. Right, so that's some of the new things that really stood out to me. If you haven't already, go download it and give it a spin. As always, thanks heaps for watching and feel free to get at me in the comments if you've got any questions. Laters.